How's it going lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I want to talk about PlayStation 5 but also PlayStation Virtual Reality because of the way that Sony believes in Virtual Reality going forward. If we want to talk about PSVR 2 games, we're going to have to be talking about PS5 games. That is of course because of this whole hybrid situation which is excellent i think it means that any potential first party game from sony at least has you know a really good chance of becoming a hybrid game having virtual reality at least in some degree in some form i think that's definitely worth looking into that's why i want to look at you know take a quick look at every single one of sony's first party studios and maybe a few of their second party partnerships that we know about as well and see what do we know what these guys are working on is there a likelihood that we might see virtual reality in what we know if that makes sense so i've done some homework i've listed out every single studio and i've listed out every kind of known project and every maybe rumored project as well and uh i think we'll start with maybe sony's best studio although that title is now in contention thanks to insomniac if you ask me but their traditional best studio which is naughty dog now surprisingly we actually do know a decent bit of what Naughty Dog is working on, uh, even if it's not been announced and you know everything's liable to be changed, cancelled, whatever. Uh, we know that they're working on The Last of Us Factions or The Last of Us Online or The Last of Us Multiplayer Mode, whether it's going to be a standalone release or whether it's going to be added on to The Last of Us Part 2. We don't know that just yet, but just the fact that they're taking so long to make us and the fact that they seem to be you know putting a big push behind us i would suspect that maybe it will be its own separate standalone thing could be free to play maybe who knows there's rumors that it's going to have like a battle royale style because there's been a leaked map and the map has locations from different maps all put together onto one big map which is like a trope at this stage when it comes to battle royale games so that's a big clue there that it could be a battle royale title and if it is battle royale free to play is kind of the way to go with battle royale these days so keep an eye out for that now is the last of us multiplayer going to have a psv or two mode that seems unlikely to me mainly because of how far into the development they already are you would imagine it's going to be built upon all the systems from the last of us part two and then they're just working on the online functionality from there the networking you know all that kind of stuff that's not to say one can't be added in i mean it just seems like an unlikely one to me uh, like for you know naughty dog's very first virtual reality experience to be the last of us multiplayer i don't see that happen now we also know that they're working on the uncharted 4 and the lost legacy remaster for both ps5 and pc which is coming out in early 2022 and i think it's safe to say that's not going to have virtual reality support so you can kind of forget about that there but it's still nice to know that they work well i should note that we don't know for sure if it's actually been dealt with in-house they haven't announced any other studios like working on it from what i understand uh at least not the ps5 version possible they have someone else working on the pc port whether that's nix's or whether that's somebody else i'm not too sure yes but we can like look at the history the last of us part one for example that was remastered on ps4 and that was done by naughty dog themselves in-house but then you had the nathan nathan drake collection which was done by blue point so i guess that doesn't really tell us anything either not that it's important one way or the other for vr because we're not going to see vr in uncharted 4 or the lost legacy i don't think now the last project that we know about and of course all up in the air because it was never officially announced uh, is the last of us one remake which is apparently happening thanks to the jason schreier big bloomberg report that was leaked earlier on this year where we kind of learned about what was going on behind the scenes with days gone 2 and stuff like that so a lot of sony secrets got spilled including the news that sony want a remake of the last was part one or i think it was a remake i don't yeah it was a remake because the remasters already exists obviously it would seem wise that if this is something that's going ahead they would want to release that to coincide with the hbo show that they're working on that has you know pedro pascal is that his real name i don't know now what's interesting about this you know a lot of people never asked for a remake for the last was part one first of all it's not even 10 years old you know it holds the, the original holds up well the remaster holds up even better so if they were to release you know another the last of us how what are they going to do to change that up virtual reality 
has the potential to make that game worth getting again to get people excited about it again you know being in that world being right up close and personal with ellie and joel and the infected and all that that could be something worth keeping an eye out uh, for so let's move on to studio number two then which is insomniac now thanks to the most recent playstation showcase we know of two more projects that we're working on i mean we all guessed that spider-man 2 was going to be there but then they also announced wolverine was coming which was like a big surprise at least to me they had recently just released ratchet and clank and then just a few months before that they had released miles morata so they've been busy they have like multiple teams they have a history with virtual reality over on the pc VR side of things, which the Stormlands and another game as well, I can't remember. So if you're talking about Spider-Man 2, I mean, look, Spider-Man is a game that Sony themselves seem to be pushing as a VR experience. We know that when Spider-Man Homecoming came out, we got that little experience uh, for free on the PlayStation Store. They did it again with Spider-Man Far From Home, which was a better attempt this time. You could actually kind of freely web swing around a certain segment of New York list and it wasn't polished it was rough janky but it was free and uh, it was enjoyable our insomniac going to go ahead and add you know a fully realized virtual reality mode in the big triple a marquee PlayStation 2 title PlayStation 2 Spider-Man 2 title uh, coming exclusively for PS5 I don't see why not. You know, if they're going to do it, if this hybrid situation is a real thing that Sony are pushing for, then I don't see why they wouldn't. Spider-Man has kind of worked with these, dem you know, these demos that we've got. Insomniac have the experience. They've got the IP. And while we're talking about, you know, the Marvel heroes that could work well in virtual reality, the Wolverine game certainly has potential. I mean, what's Wolverine's weapon of choice? He's got his two claws. What are the PS5 viewers controller? They're two motion control orbs. So you can imagine you can have a good time stabbing, slicing, whatever. In fact, I would say Wolverine has a better chance than Spider-Man 2 because, you know, if we're talking about Wolverine, I'm, I'm having a hard time picturing that being like a big open world. I can see it being more of a linear thing, which might suit virtual reality a little bit better. Spider-Man, again, it's all up in the air, but I think Wolverine has a better chance than Spider-Man, but I still think Spider-Man has a good chance as well. What else could Insomniac be working on? They did just recently release Ratchet and Clank, so it's possible they're working on some DLC for that as well, although that is unlikely based on the history of that franchise. But knowing that team, they probably have two other projects, you know, ready to go as soon as Wolverine gets out the door. Spider-Man 2, 2023, so that's going to be a while to waste. PS Viewer 2 will, you know, in theory be out by then. So that's Naughty Dog and Insomniac out of the way, the two big heavy hitters. Next up, let's talk about Sucker Punch. So Sucker Punch just recently finished with the Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, which added the expansions, you know, DLC plus the enhancements for PS5 to Ghost of Tsushima, which was like a really well received game, including myself. I really liked that game. There have also been rumors recently of an infamous game making a return whether those rumors you know come to fruition or not remains to be seen we know that infamous has had like a little bit of a history with motion controller support and it was one of those early weird kind of games that supported the move controllers i never used it myself infamous in virtual reality i mean you can see it happening, especially if you're building a ground up. Doesn't have to be the same characters they've established already. Infamous Second Son already moved away from Cole McGrath, so we could move away from Delson Rowe. And whatever his powers are, maybe they work very well in virtual reality, you know? Um, as for a Ghost of Tsushima sequel, which also seems likely based on the popularity of the first one, how well it was received, people might be thirsty for a little bit more of that. It's harder to say whether that's going to have viewer support. Um, I mean, obviously we can all imagine samurai duels being very cool with motion controls and whatnot when you're in that world. But again, remains to be seen. Sucker Punch, no real history with virtual reality, just a little bit of motion control support. However, again, first party owned studio, Sony might be making a push. I don't know if they're going to be like forcing them. I think that wouldn't be kind of against Sony's policy of kind of, not policy, but the reputation of being 
you know, the ones who give creative freedom to these studios, if you're forcing them to add VR and they don't want to do it, I can see Sony being like, okay, fine. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But if you can, please try. So yeah, just be aware of what's going on at Sucker Punch. There's always, of course, the potential for them to come along with another new IP next. Who knows? Now, next up are Guerrilla Games. What are they working on right now? We know that they're working on Horizon Forbidden West, which is coming out in February next year for PS5 and PS4. Beyond that, we don't know much about what they're doing. We know they have a history with Killzone. It could become a situation where they go for Horizon to Killzone, Horizon Killzone, for, or for all we know they're done with Killzone and they're just going to stick with Horizon for a trilogy or something before moving on to a new IP, or they might go for a new IP straight away after this. Now when it comes to Horizon itself, I mean we'll talk a little bit more about Horizon, but there is reports, rumours of a Horizon virtual reality game, just that it's not coming from Guerrilla. So the fact that they're not handling, you know, this rumoured Horizon virtual reality game maybe speaks to the fact that they don't want to do VR or they're more comfortable focusing on the flat stuff and then lending out that IP to the other studios and might do that. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Next up, Polyphony Digital. These guys only do one game and they've been doing it for, you know, 30, you know, 25 years, something like that. Gran Turismo, that's their game, that's their jam. Uh, that franchise has traditionally been like Sony's best selling franchise because it's global. You know, it's the, it speaks to a lot of people. We know they have a history with virtual reality support. They added this in their previous Gran Turismo game, Gran Turismo Sport. So going by that, going by Sony's push for hybrid games, you would have to imagine that Gran Turismo 7, although they have not confirmed this, is more than likely going to have PSV or 2 support, if not at launch, because it's, mar it's launching in March and I don't expect the headset to be out by then. I'm sure they'll update it when the, when the headset finally does arrive. Uh, to have PS5 viewer support. And then after that, you know, they're just going to support Gran Turismo 7 for like a few years before, you know, we get another Gran Turismo, likely. Unless Gran Turismo 7 is like a massive disaster or flop. Can't see that happening though. Next up then is Media Molecule, and they're kind of in a unique position. They're a fairly small studio. They've got this game, Dreams. The Sony seem to be backing 100% even though I would suspect many people see Dreams as kind of being a bit of a failure. It's not exactly set the world on fire. Every once in a while someone will make something cool in this, like PT, PT you know, they'll remake PT in Dreams playable, and then that will go viral or whatever. Uh, but then after that it kind of dies down again. I'm not sure there's many players playing it simultaneously at the same time. However, that game does have PS4 support. Yeah, it has it right now actually, not even a history of it, they have it right now. PS4 support everyone's kind of expecting their next thing to be just a port of Dreams on PS5. I don't see them moving away from Dreams, like making another game alongside Dreams. I think they'll stick with Dreams for another while, yes, until Sony either says, okay, it's time to pull the plug on this thing, or it's time to move on to another project. But if and when that day does happen and a new IP comes out from them, I can see that happen, you know, virtual reality support easily because they are one of those experimental studios that Sony have and they'll try out the they'll try out the weird and wacky stuff. Next up is Pixel Opus, probably Sony's smallest studio, I think, don't quote me on that, but they're probably the least well known of the Sony studios. Their latest game was Concrete Genie that did have PS viewer support, but it was only for like a, a limited separate mode. They're kind of a dark horse when it comes to will their next game have viewer support. I'd be leaning towards yes, maybe because Again, first party, Sony are pushing us, and they have a history with viewer support. Obviously, it remains to be seen, it's just speculation, really, but my gut is leaning towards yes, they will support viewer, but whatever they do next, will it be Concrete Genie 2? Who knows? I mean, I don't think that game set the world on fire. Reviewed relatively well, you know, didn't get 90s or anything like that, but like people enjoyed that one. Very little known about that studio, like nothing really leaks out of it or whatever, you know. So I've added Nixes in here because they are technically owned by Sony first party studio but these guys specialize in ports Sony have come out and said these guys were going to be putting them to work doing PC ports so I just wanted to mention them briefly I don't expect anything from these guys when it comes to virtual reality at least for PS5 you know maybe they'll port a PS VR game to PC that's possible but uh not really good for us as a PS VR dedicated channel of course you know uh, get that PC crap out of here am I right so next up then I want to talk about Fire Sprite Studios, which is the most recent 
Sony acquisition. I mean, they only acquired them like last week or so. And these are the guys with very strong virtual reality, you know, history. They worked on, well, they created the Persistence, which is a highly regarded PSVR game. And these are the guys who are rumored to be working on Horizon virtual reality. Um, so they've announced officially, PlayStation have, that these guys are working on two projects right now. One of them is like a groundbreaking multiplayer title, and then the other one is a dark narrative, you know, more single player focused thing. I'm not sure either of those would be Horizon V or would like would that fit into those things? I don't know if I'd call Horizon like a dark narrative thing, unless they take a dark twist to it, maybe. I can't see it being multiplayer, but could be wrong about that as well. It's possible that they just don't want to talk about Horizon V or at all. They don't want to leak it whatsoever or hint about it at all until, you know, PS VR 2 or PS5 VR headset is ready to show off and then they'll reveal it there. But yeah, when they did acquire Fire Sprite, it was one of those bullet points that uh, Herman Hulse said is like, yes, we can we can definitely use their experience with virtual reality. That's something that's going to be nice to have in our tool belt. After that, then we have Team Asobi, which was kind of met up this year or last year. I can't remember which of Sony Japan Studio kind of got broken down and then remnants of that were rammed into this team of Sobi who are kind of known for the Astrobot games, Playroom, Rob you know, Rescue Mission, um, obviously huge virtual reality history with them. I would definitely expect their next game to be a hybrid. I would expect it to be playable flash but also playable virtual reality. I feel like if I was going to bet the house on any of these studios making their next game being like a, a hybrid game, I think Team Asobi are most likely to be the, the safest bet there. I'll also stick my neck out and say they're probably going to be making another Astrobot game, but who knows. Next up we have another one of the heavy hazards, the Sony Santa Monica Studio. These guys, last two games, well this next one hasn't released yet, but God of War and now we're expecting God of War Ragnarok to come out in 2022. They don't have a month yet, or even a period. Not expecting virtual reality support for Ragnarok. Obviously, I think that's too soon. Maybe it's something that can be updated down the line, but I'm not expecting that too much. However, we do know that Ragnarok is going to have a new director, so not Corey Barlog, who is a big reason, I think, why the first God of War was as successful as it was. He's moving on to like the secret project now that he's not talking about. He's teasing us a little bit. That could be anything. That could be virtual reality. I'm kind of excited about that one. I think that has the potential to be the hybrid title. And there's lots of rumors in the past of Santa Monica working on like a sci-fi game. Obviously, a lot of things could change. We'll wait and see there. So next up, we have Housemark. These guys, also a small studio. I wonder if they're bigger than Pixel Opus. I'm not too sure. Their most recent game was Returnal. Chris Hill's success. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm really enjoying that game when I get a chance to get back into it. If I had to guess, I would imagine they're probably working on DLC for Returnal now because of how well received it was. I'd be surprised if they drop it completely, maybe add a new biome or whatever. After that, then it's all up in the air. You know, this is a studio well known for the arcade style twin stick shoesers. They've said they had to move away from that and they have to go AAA now. Hence, Returnal, but if you ask me, Returnal like really still felt like arcade style. It wasn't twin stick shooting, but you know, it felt like that. I wouldn't be especially confident that their next one will be a hybrid game. Next up, we're talking about San Diego, who kind of like Polyphony Digital, they're kind of relegated to just doing one franchise. They're kind of shackled to that. So I wonder if they would like to do something else, but regardless, what they work on is MLB The Show, a baseball game, which I've always you know, thought was a real shame because baseball isn't popular in Europe at all. So it's kind of like, I feel like a studio that never really does anything for me. And as a Sony fanboy, it makes me very sad. Do I see MLB The Show 23 or whatever they're doing next? Um, do I see that being virtual reality, you know, enabled or whatever? Possibly. Now that the MLB have forced San Diego's hand, or Sony's hand I should say, and they've forced them to make these games available on Xbox, and other platforms or whatever uh, maybe in order to differentiate you know in order to add value to the playstation version they could say well you can play this in virtual reality i mean we sports did baseball you know motion control works for baseball i can see that being a virtual reality you know i can i can see them fitting together nicely that genre of sport 
plus virtual reality, plus motion controls. Seems like a fit, you know? Next up then are Sony London Studio. Now that Horizon viewer game that I was talking about earlier on, that was originally kind of penned to Sony London Studio and then it moved to Fire Sprite. So there is a kind of a question of, are these guys still into virtual reality now? They did PS viewer worlds. They're probably the biggest virtual reality studio that Sony have had up until this point. They did blood and truths, but there has been reports, you know, suspicious kind of changes to their websites. Uh, where they kind of removed all mention of working on a virtual reality title. It's possible they're moving away from it, but it just seems strange to me that with their experience and their history and their know-how, that whatever they're working on next wouldn't at least be a hybrid, you know, if not a ground-up virtual reality-only experience. That would be kind of a surprise. Now, they are hiring for a project, but I just don't know what it is. It could be The Getaway 3. It could be Blood and Truth 2. It could be anything. And then the final first party studio is Sony Bend. So these are the guys who did Days Gone. They wanted to do Days Gone 2. According to the big leak from Jason Schreier, they pitched Days Gone 2. Sony were not impressed with this, either because whatever they pitched wasn't good enough or because the performance of Days Gone 1 wasn't where it needed to be in terms of sales or whatever, even though it was, you know, a successful enough game and it certainly has a fan base. After that, Sony asked them to continue on with the Uncharted franchise, which they began to do for a period of time, but at some point they kind of put their foot down and said, we want to do something unique, we want our own IP. And whatever they pitched them after that, Sony said, okay, you can do that. So we know they're working on a brand new IP. No other details, although based on their, you know, based on their work with Days Gone, you'd imagine maybe they want to build on what they've already done. So I would imagine it's probably open world, whatever it is, will it be hybrid virtual reality? Who knows, you know? So that's where Bend is at, and that's where kind of all the first party studios are at, as of right now. I just want to touch then on some kind of second party studios, which is kind of, you know, true for three of these and then not necessarily true or correct for this next one I'm going to talk about, which is Bluepoint. So originally I would have put Bluepoint games in the first party, section of this because there was that leak a few months ago where Sony announced that they had acquired Housemark, but then by accident they put up that they had acquired Bluepoint like an image somebody created this image they put it up there instead of Housemark. so you know it was like okay well they've obviously acquired Bluepoint but this has been months and they've since acquired Fire Sprite and announced us they've said nothing about Bluepoint so at this point, I'm not even, I'm not as confident as I used to be that Bluepoint has been acquired by Sony. I still think they probably are. Maybe they're waiting for a trailer to be ready before they announce it for whatever they're working on next. But as of right now, I'm putting them down as a second party studio because that's the relationship they've had with Sony so far. You know, Shadow of the Colossus remake, Demon Souls remake, the most recent one, both excellent games. These guys are fantastic at remaking games from the ground up, classic games. And there really is, you know, I suppose that would say that there's little potential for whatever they're doing next to be a new IP. So whatever they're working on next is more than likely going to be another remake. This is what they're known for. More than likely as well, I would say it's a PlayStation owned IP, whatever it is working, like whatever this remake would be. So yeah, over the last number of years, you know, one of the big speculating things, one of the things people are always talking about, wondering about is what the hell are Blue Point making next, you know? After Shadow of the Classes, what are they working on next? It turned out to be Demon Souls. After Demon Souls, what are they working on next? Apparently there was rumors that they were working on two projects at the same time, so alongside Demon Souls, something else was already in development. What could that be? Speculation that it's Siphon Filter, Legend of D- Dragoon, Metal Gear Solid, stuff like that. There's like a ton of rumors. No history with virtual reality, but there's a first time for everything, of course. And if Sony are, you know, trying to get them to sweeten the deal or whatever, then they would, I'm sure, um, put hybrid virtual reality support on the table. Whether or not they would accept that is another story. Uh, But, again, it's another potential studio. I can put another game in our library, our virtual reality library. So then these next three studios I'm going to talk about are kind of strange. Everything about this kind of thing is strange with these three because two of them were just recently formed. All three of them have gone into deals, presumably to make an exclusive PS5 game with Sony. So we'll start with the order they came in. So the first one is from Haven Games. This is the studio that was founded by Jade Raymond, who has like a history with Ubisoft. I think she was like a producer behind the original Assassin's Creed. So she's kind of a big name in the game dev industry. The only thing they revealed is that it's a new IP 
for PlayStation, presumably PlayStation 5. I'm not expecting to see anything about this game for at least another year maybe, but yeah, completely up in the air as to whether or not this will have virtual reality support. But again, it's another one, keep in the back of your mind, this is potential, all right? And the same is true for the next one, Firewalk Studios. Although this studio has been formed since 2018. So whatever they're working on, they've had maybe potentially close to three years already developing it. We know it's multiplayer, but that's kind of all they've said about it. It's a new IP, multiplayer, and it's coming to PlayStation 5. But the potential is there. Same with the final studio we're going to talk about, which is Deviation Games. They are working on an original IP, and they are also newly formed. And they've got, like, talent from games such as Destiny and, I think, Guitar Hero as well, or something like that. Um, so, potential there for a multiplayer game. So, yeah, that is all the studios, all the first-party studios, plus three that we know for sure have a second-party agreement with Sony, and one in the form of a blue point that either will become first party or more than likely even if they don't they will likely become second party partners once again with whatever they're working on next and the whole point of this video is to just keep a tabs on these guys because now that sony are saying that hybrid games are the way to go for virtual reality that means all of these games have like a really high potential or all these studios i should say have a really high potential of putting something else for ps viewer 2 for ps5 viewer whatever you want to call it i wish they would just give us a name so i could stop juggling between those so let me know what you think in the comments below if i missed a potential ip or something very obvious or whatever that you know i think the studio could be working on i know i didn't talk too much about killzone that's ideal for virtual reality i know insomniac also have resistance under their belt another one ideal so yeah let me know what you think what you'd like to see uh what you think wouldn't work do you think like the last of us multiplayer would be like a bad fit you know maybe some games just don't work in virtual reality as well as they would flat let me know all that in the comments before i end this video let me thank my patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as i speak thanks to their generosity they're helping keep this channel nice and moist in particular the top tier patreon supporters pete hawkins from tradition and daniel the pumpkin patch kid thank you very much for that support it's very much appreciated if you'd like to join the patreon the link will be in the description as well finally let me thank decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos you can check him out decepticon.com link in the description with that i will end this video thank you very much for watching lads and ladies please stay moist in these dry times petrified